first welding problem we have here is a static yield problem with a given filler rod, a given factor of safety, given load, and the weld geometry is largely determined. The only thing left to determine is the height h of the weld. So it's stated here that this is welded all around visually. Uh, that just means that everywhere these little circles are indicates a weld. Uh, in terms of an actual weld note, what this would look like, you'd have the leader. I have to pretty much assume that it is going to be a fillet uh, weld. Most of the welds that we're going to deal with are going to be fillet welds of some height, which is what we're calculating. That'll be H. And since it does go all the way around, and give it the all around symbol. So that's what it looks like. Now, all we have for forces is 10 kilonewton load acting vertically. So in terms of what's reacting through the weld, we're going to have a shear force vertically that is going to cause a uh, direct shear. And since it's cantilevered out, there's also a bending force which causes a tensile reaction in that direction. Uh, however, we've seen through, uh, through the lectures that that gets resolved through a shear stress in the actual weld geometry itself. So we can calculate that as MC over I, but it resolves itself as a shear stress. And what we're going to need now is the, uh, just a couple of properties, the area. This is table 9-2 in Shigley for a rectangular weld section where B is the narrow edge, D is the top edge. And then uh, the second unit area moment here is given, and the area value is also given. You can see that the area is dependent on that weld height H, meaning that it's, this is where we're going to solve for H, essentially. And IU will multiply by dot 707 H in order to calculate the area moment of inertia from the second unit area moment of inertia. Uh, we'll get to that in a second. So just a little bit of uh, prep work. We've got B and H defined by the problem. SY for that 60 E6010 material is 345 megapascals. The area and second unit moment of area equations are given there. Those are straight from table 9-2. We've calculated the values. And again, you can see that the area is dependent upon H. Uh, when I calculate I, or rather when I use it in the equation, it's going to look like IU times dot 707 h that extra h will give it units of millimeters to the fourth but i u you can see here is actually millimeters to the third now i stated there are two shears uh, two shear stresses developed by this geometry with this load case a direct shear and a horizontal shear and we'll start calculations with the direct shear I'm going to give it symbol tau prime, and its value is just the shear force divided by the weld area. And the shear force we're given is 10,000 newtons. The weld area is 268.7 times h. And that does have units of stress, megapascals. Now the shear due to bending, you could also call it the horizontal shear, because that's the direction it acts in. We'll just say shear due to bending here, though. Also a shear stress, I'm going to set that equal to MC over I. If you don't remember why I'm, I'm calculating a bending stress, which is effectively a normal stress left to its own, um, again, refer back to the notes to see why we can present that as a shear stress. The moment will be our force of 10,000. It's offset at a distance of 160 millimeters. C is the half height of the section. Uh, we're bending about the x-axis, so the half height about that axis is 60 millimeters. Then I is, as stated above, uh, it's IU. Times dot 707H. And carrying out that calculation, we get 171.4 over H megapascals. We've got two stresses in two separate directions. As long as we understand the directions of those two shear stresses, we can calculate a magnitude. Um, now the bending stress, the shear stress rather, is constant all the way along the section. It's, we're just assuming it's evenly distributed. The bending stress, however, due to the distribution of the bending stress, is going to be a maximum tensile load at the top between A and B. So that's where we're actually calculating uh, the maximum stress here.
So this is B to A. Uh, the stresses we're, we're calculating are going to be valid all along that line, but we're just going to consider it at one point of tau prime. And tau double prime. Uh, those are opposite the directions of the forces on the previous diagram. You can just take these to be the, the direct shears as opposed to the reactions. So of course the resultant out of those two, since they are perpendicular, is just going to be the root sum square. We'll call that tau. So tau is going to be equal to tau prime squared plus tau double prime squared, and you've taken the root. So we got 37.22 over h quantity squared plus 171.4 over h quantity squared rooted. And we can go ahead and run all the math inside, and we get 175.4 over h megapascals. Now since we have a shear stress, we can compare that directly to a shear strength with a factor of safety equation that just looks like factor of safety against yield is equal to the yield strength in shear divided by the shear stress. So a yield strength, uh, well out of this we have a, a known factor of safety of 3, uh, the yield strength was 199.1. And our shear stress here is 175.4 over H. Out of that, you can calculate H to be 2.64 millimeters. So in terms of the math here, that is a complete solution. Uh, in a practical sense, uh, welding tolerances are, are very, very rarely going to be given with much in the way of precision. Um, uh, a value for a weld in this ballpark, it, it would likely be something more like 3 millimeters, plus or minus as much as uh, 0 0.4, 0 0.5 millimeters, something like that. It kind of depends on how confident and how certain you are that you need that factor of safety of 3. That is a fairly high factor. But regardless, uh, bear in mind, it's... it's that is not the sort of uh, tolerance dimension that you're going to be able to hit with very many welding processes, general welding processes on a day-to-day -day basis. So you calculate a number like that, the natural thing to do is just round up to a whole number if you're in uh, the metric system, maybe round up to the tenth of an inch if you're in the imperial system. But uh, yeah, that's uh, one, one process through the basic set of welding calculations.